over 6,000 feet above sea level. Hurricane force winds scream by in a stream of sub-zero air. Four below zero. But that's nothing. The all-time record on the summit is 47 below. But it's the wind that has put the observatory on the map. An astonishing 231 miles per hour, recorded back in 1934. It remains the strongest wind ever measured on planet Earth. When you step outside and it's blowing 120 miles an hour, uh, you suddenly realize that you are not in control. Neil LaRue is part of the Mount Washington crew, a dedicated group of weather observers who track the extreme conditions on this rock, all in the name of science. I join Neil in the blue cap on his watch. Oh my God. <laughs> Neil fights the wind. Temperature, visibility, and wind speed are among the variables he measures every hour. But a constant buildup of feather-like rime ice can cause the instruments to fail, requiring right, daring feats of de-icing. And if I have a problem, what do I do? Sit down. All right. With crowbars in hand, we climb the parapet, the highest, windiest, and by far scariest point on the peak. Tapping the metal, we send the rime ice flying. You definitely get used to the wind. And you almost uh, can get cocky about it at times. We call ourselves wind snobs. Ah! Oh my god, I gotta get down! Inside, the wind records justified my fears. Uh, and it was gusting up around 91, 92 miles an hour at that time. Sending wind chill values to 50 below. So why is the weather so extreme? Mount Washington's elevation is the key, and it stands at the crossroads of three major storm tracks, making the ice-encrusted peak a natural weather laboratory. Just walking out the door, you realize that this environment could do serious damage to you. Requiring special cold weather gear, long underwear to start, fleece, ski pants, and plastic double boots, a down jacket, face mask, snow cap, and goggles, Gore-Tex shell, gloves, and an ice axe and crampons when needed. I love extreme weather. Meteorologist Chris Peruzzi manages the six-person summit staff and has worked at the observatory for two years. I couldn't ask for a better job right now at this, at this time of my life. But at this time of year, just getting to her dream job is a challenge. The snow cat ride up can take hours, and she needs to be prepared to walk the distance just in case. Good morning from the Mount Washington Observatory. For current weather, we have freezing fog and a visibility of one-eighth of a mile. The weather observers work grueling 12-hour shifts. Much time is spent keeping meticulous records of hourly observations. These records date back to the late 1800s, providing clues about our changing climate. The data also goes to the National Weather Service to help improve the quality of local forecasts. We're going to reconnect the hose. Observers also conduct important research. Uh, solid Dressed in lab suits to prevent uh, contamination, Neil and I change an air filter, carefully air? preserving the used one for future air quality analysis. It's like a, a buffet kind of 5 p.m. dinner gives everyone a break from the daily grind. It's the community of people uh, that live and work up here, kind of like a family away from home. The two foot thick cement walls and bulletproof glass able to withstand 300 mile per hour winds keep the observatory remarkably cozy and warm. The small staff live together on the summit for eight days at a time, followed by six days off. Enough time for some fun inside and out. But despite the extreme working conditions and unique challenges that come with this lifestyle, the weather observers here on the summit agree. There are incredible benefits to life at the top. Well, one thing I'll never get tired of is the sunrises and sunsets that we get up here. It can be a view like no other. The landscape stretching out over 100 miles in all directions. And the clouds don't disappoint. Well, those can stretch for miles and just tower and layer right up. It's just amazing. You can't get enough of them. Or the dazzling optical effects. Halos around the sun that baffle your mind along with fiery displays of the northern lights. One thing I've, I've always said is, you know, live life to the fullest. 